Alright, last chapter in the book. Chapter 9, Troubleshooting the Network. Should be a nice, easy chapter and a nice way to round, wind it down uh, so that you can study for your hands-on, which is coming next week. So, we're going to talk about troubleshooting with a systematic approach, network troubleshooting, and then that's it. Alright, so there's your objectives. Pause the video if you want to read those. So, the first step, anytime you take over a network or something like that, or you get a new position, um, you should make sure that you have complete documentation of the network. Every piece of hardware you have should be documented. Um, if it's a server, a router, or something like that, like most places I've ever been to, each piece of hardware had its own three-ring binder that was stored in, in a room. Um, typically the room where that device was stored if possible. And if it was like a router or switch that was that was placed somewhere else in an equipment closet or something, that was all kept in a library in the IT area. And that way, if you were going to go do something on the router, you grab that router's book. And then inside that book on the first page, and the, most of the stuff was like in sheet protectors and that kind of stuff. You know, what model number it was, what iOS it had on it, what the, the settings were, that kind of stuff. Um, there was a CD in the back that had a copy of the configs and that kind of things. And then, if you made any changes, you document them in this book. You know, hey, I went here, I changed the OSPF, you know, uh, I advertised this new network in OSPF. And that way, if you left it, if you did something at 3 o'clock and then left at 4, and a new guy came in at 4 o'clock and there were issues, and he tracked it down to that device, he could go back and open the book and find where you made those changes. So change management is a big thing, and they have tons of books about this, and there's the ITIL libraries and a bunch of other stuff. But you get the idea. So we want to have documentation. We want to have our networks mapped out on big maps. We want to have you know information on that stuff. Uh, we want to have physical and logical diagrams, and we need to have an idea of how what the performance level is of our network. And we need to have real data. You know, saying oh everybody's reporting the networks faster since I took over last year. Well, that's not really that good. I mean, how do you justify that? Oh well, Susie says her email opens faster. I mean, really? Maybe Susie just likes you, that kind of thing. So that kind of stuff does not go well in uh, your performance evaluation if you have a real boss. But if you're able to go in there and say, hey, you know, when I took over, here's, the, here's how long it took a ping, here's how long, you know, trace routes went, blah, blah, blah. And then after I reconfigured everything, you know, I shaved, you know, 30% performance increase off of this. That's tangible data. That's actual fact. And that will help you to get your raise or whatever you want. So a baseline. So again, you should have diagrams um, of the physical topology, the logical topology. Most of the time these are done in Visio. They're blown up poster size and they're laminated so you can like document things. Um, you know, what models are on there, what IP addresses, what cable types, that kind of thing. Um, and as far as the logical network goes, if you've got MPLS or, I'm um, sorry, Frame Relay, um, what's your DLCI numbers, you know, all that information. Have I created any site-to-site -site VPNs with my partners? Um, you know, maybe we have a, a business partner down the road and we have a VPN. What were the settings I used? Did I save that configuration on the firewall? What happens if that firewall, what happens if Joe Bob did all that information and got it all running, and then a year later Joe Bob quits, and then right after Joe Bob quits, that firewall dies? You gotta pop in a new firewall, you don't have a copy of the configs, you have no idea what the VPN was set for, that kind of thing. So that's why we want to have that. So establishing a baseline. A baseline just means under normal conditions, this is how my network runs. And you should have these from the servers, the routers, your PCs, you know, um, like my, my routers and my P uh, servers. What's their normal CPU utilization? Um, track that for a day, then track that each day for a week, then track that each day for a month. And that way, and then check my bandwidth utilization on my links. You know, I should have all that information listed somewhere. And that way, if my boss is complaining and saying, hey, um, everybody's complaining to me the network is slow. I can show him, hey, you know, last year, you know, we were only utilizing 60% of our bandwidth on our links. This year, because we've grown so much, we're now utilizing 95%. Uh, and that's why we're seeing, you know, this and that. Or, you know, now the routers are, are getting hammered for 90% utilization. Or now my servers are being overloaded and my RAM is constantly at 100% utilization. 
that kind of stuff. That stuff justifies new equipment. You know, just walking in and saying, oh, well, we need a new email server because we got lots of email. <laughs> that kind of stuff does not work well when you get a real boss. So that's a baseline. Um, a baseline is just measurements for average everyday stuff. And that way you can know what's my busiest hour of the day? What's my busiest hour of the week? What's my busiest week of the month? That kind of stuff. So to establish a baseline here, you're using Cisco wide area application services, blah, 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 blah some Cisco monitoring uh, uh, application. So you want to figure out what types of data do I need to collect. If you're just starting out, start with the basics. I want to know what my CPU utilization is, I want to know what my memory utilization is, and I want to know what my bandwidth utilization is. Uh, and then go from there. Um, so then identify devices, port numbers, and then determining how long you're going to record these baselines. Am I going to record every hour? Am I recording every three seconds? Uh, am I recording for days? In a perfect world, you want several baselines. You want to do a baseline. Um, you want to know what your busiest hour of the day is. So you need to take the baseline, you know, at eight from eight to six o'clock or whenever the place closes. And that way you can see, hey, for some reason on Monday, the busiest day for the last three Mondays or the busiest hour has always been three o'clock. What's going on at three o'clock that, that creates all this traffic? And then you can either use the network to determine that information. Where is this traffic coming from? Oh, it's all coming from sales. What's sales doing at 3 o'clock? Um, or it's coming from finance. Finance must be pushing a bunch of reports that day or at that hour. Um, maybe I can get them to spread that out throughout that day, something like that. But you get the idea. All right, so how do I measure data? Obviously, Ping and Telnet are very free, nice, easy tools. You know, if I go from my PC and I ping all the devices and I ping the remote offices and I record those pings, that actually shows me the time, uh, you know, the time it took to get there. Telnet is, a, or I'm sorry, Telneting the things, um, uh, trace route, another good one, or trace cert from your PC, you know, shows me my time. How long, you know, it took me 30 milliseconds. Well, after the first year, after my changes, if I'm down to 10 milliseconds, I know I've made a, a nice increase in performance. So then other things for the documentation process, you know, show IP interface brief, what are my IP addresses, um, show IP route, what protocols do I have going on. Another one I would recommend is show IP protocols to see, you know, what networks I'm advertising, things like that. So anytime there's a problem, it's just kind of it's kind of like hacking. You don't want to preconceive uh, your attack or preconceive what the problem is or, you know, oh, uh, I think it's this walking right into it. You know, you want to gather information first. You know, user says, hey, I can't print. And you immediately go jump to the printer uh, and then try to print it from somewhere else. And you're, you're automatically thinking it's a printer. And then you, you find a loose cable and you jiggle it in and all of a sudden then you hit the print button and the printer works. You're like, oh, I've solved it. But what you didn't solve is you didn't solve the issue from the customer's point of view. You didn't go to the customer's PC and try to print from there because maybe she has the wrong IP address or she has the wrong printer set as default. So by the time you get back to the office, she's going to have called the office and said, you didn't fix her problem. And then you look like an idiot. So don't look like an idiot. So we gather information. You know. Um, what are the symptoms? What's going on? And we need to isolate that because users are going to give you the worst information imaginable. You're going to get phone calls, oh, the whole network's down here in sales. And you can run down to sales. One person can't get to the email server. And that's their idea of the whole network is down. Or, oh, the internet's down. Nobody can get onto it. And you can you go down there and there's one person there that can't get on the internet. And then, or, oh, my PC won't work. You go down there, you send an IT guy, you know, the basic help desk guy to fix the PC. And again, she can't get to the email server because the email server has a problem, which is out of the range of the things that this help desk guy would normally fix. So you have to really question the user. You know, oh, hey, the network's down. Okay, what do you mean the network's down? You know, what are you trying to do? Oh, I'm trying to get to email and the email's not there. So then the first thing I would do is go from my PC and see if I can get the email server. Well, I can get the email, but she can't. So it's probably a connectivity issue between her and the, and the email server. Maybe her settings, maybe her cable, something like that. Then I ask her, can you ask the person next to you or somebody else in your area, can they get to their email? Susie, can you get the email? Okay, great. Yeah, Susie can get the email. So then I know it's just that person. So then I can send you know, an IT guy down there, and I know it's not the email server, so it's not going to be out of his league, that kind of stuff. 
So you see there how I, I isolated the problem. Is it the server? If she can't get to the server, let me check. Oh, if I couldn't get to the server, it's probably a server issue. But if I can get to the server, it's not a server issue. It's a connectivity issue or a PC issue. So that's isolating the problem. You know, can other people get it? Who is this affecting? Um, and, and kind of that kind of stuff. And at that point, you want to implement your corrective action. So I send an IT guy down there. He goes down there, and he sees that she must have been screwing around with her... Uh, email settings and she couldn't get there. So then he should, from her PC, have her, hey, now that I fixed this, I want you to go into your email. Okay, is the, do you, so are, are you satisfied with the work? Or, you know, is the, are you fixed? And then the, the user says yes, and then you can go back to your office. There's no way she can say you didn't fix the issue because you walked her through, you know, verifying that the issue was fixed. Again, all it takes is one or two users to say that you weren't fixing their issues, and next thing you know, you can develop a reputation inside that company that when they call the help desk, they're oh, but don't send you know Joe Bob because he never fixes anything. That kind of stuff. You don't want that. You want to be the guy that they ask for. Hey, can you send Don Juan down because he's hot? <laughs> that kind of stuff. All right, and then depending on what it is, depending on what kind of software you have. Most places have a, a help, some kind of help desk software where you can record what the issues were. I'll give an example. Uh, the place where I worked at, we had um, thin clients. So there were little devices that had some memory and stuff, and they, they, you turned them on, and what they did was they used like Telnet or um, oh crap, terminal services to go out to the server, and then they viewed everything from the server. So the, 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 the thin client didn't have a, a hard drive in there, you know, because it did everything off the server. Well, with these thin clients, there was this weird issue with power where the the power brick that p powered it would get some kind of weird charge in it and then it wouldn't turn on. So they would turn these devices on and off and it wouldn't work. They would unplug them, plug them in, it wouldn't work. And for some reason, I don't know how it happened, but somebody figured out that if they unplugged this power brick and then just tapped it in their hand and then plugged it back in, it kind of cleared the thing out and then everything that would work again. But if you just unplugged and plugged it back in, it, the device still wouldn't power up. So luckily, you know, he documented this in our help desk software and then when everybody else ran into the issue, they knew exactly how to fix it. So yeah, you don't want to keep that information to yourself. You want to be the one solving these issues and recording these tickets. Hey, you know, Joe Bob solved this or Don Juan solved this. Um, and that way, when it comes time for your raise or your evaluation, hey, you know, I solved these 14 problems and documented these, you know, in the software. And you've got proof. So you show them what an asset you are. You, know, you can't just say, oh, everybody likes me. Well, you could be good looking. All right, so again, remember there, there's ping, there's trace route. I can tell it in the devices, grab information like IP route. Just remember with IP, there's always um, IP4 and IP6. Um, so depending on what version you're running, uh, everything is separate. So show IP route doesn't show you the IP6 routes. Show IPv6 route doesn't show you the IP4 routes, that kind of stuff. So we need to ask questions from the users. Hey, you know, what's the problem? What exactly are you trying to do? Okay, what, we, walk me through that. Show me what you're typing. What are you typing in now? What program are you opening? Because they'll tell you the Internet's not working, and they're actually trying to go to their email server or something like that. You never know. Um, we want to speak at a level that the users can understand. Oh, I need you to test your TCP IP stack. You know, all you're doing is proving you're an idiot at that point because the user has no idea what their TCP IP stack is. Um, you want to walk through, well, let me walk you through a, a something. I need you to go to your start button and press that. And then in the search box, I need to type in CMD for Charlie Mike David. Okay, did that make a little box, black box pop up? Okay, great. Now I need you to type in ping, P I N G space to, you know, 127.0.0.1 and hit enter. Okay, what does the screen say when you type that in? That stuff, you know, to tell uh, a user, hey, I need you to test your TCP IP stack, is just idiotic. Uh, and actually, I had a guy that used to do that, and he used to drive me nuts, and everybody thought he was an idiot. All right, you want to ask the user, hey, when did the problem first occur? When did you first notice this? You know, oh, yeah, like a week ago, but I, I've been trying to get my email for a week. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, did anything unusual happen since the last time it worked? Oh, yeah, Joe Bob dropped the printer, and, that, and then since then I can't print. <laughs> Well, that would have helped. Again, I'll give you another story. Um, the finance department called. This is when I was early help desk. Finance department called. So I run up there, and they got a huge area where there's like people on both sides of the room, uh, and they had a printer on both sides. So I go up there, and they're like, "Oh yeah, the printer doesn't work." 
So I go up there and I'm playing with the printer and now everybody's kind of like on the left side of the room where the printer doesn't work. So I'm like, all right, well, and then on the right side of the room, um, they had done some moves and stuff. So there was hard, there was like only, only one person there on the whole right side of the room, but they had a big printer there too. So I'm like, all right, well, I can't get the printer to work. I can't even get the power on. So it's obviously an issue with the printer. So I, I unplug the printer and I move everything off the desk and I put it down on the ground. And then I thought, well, I'm going to be helpful. You know, I've got the IP address of their, their printer. So in order to keep these guys productive, I'm going to go grab the other printer on the other side of the room, move it over here, and change the IP address. So they're all watching me, and I grab this printer, and I walk it over to this new desk, and I plug it in, and then I turn it on, and as soon as I turn it on, boom, smoke comes out, and I get sparks out of the, uh, the wall jack. And the girl looks over me, and she's like, oh, yeah, that wall jack doesn't work. Didn't you know that? <laughs> like, if I'd have known that, would I just plugged in a $2,000 printer in there? Come on. Uh, yeah, so... Again, you got to be careful uh, and, and talk about these things. You know, is there anything I should know about these jacks? That kind of weird stuff. Um, one of my favorites, like when I go out to the desk with the, to the user, is, you know, hey, show me what you're doing. You know, recreate the problem. Because they'll tell you one thing, and they'll do another. Uh, and you, you're like, okay, so this means the whole network's out. You can't get to your email. That kind of stuff. All right, uh, so you get the idea. All right, use a layered approach. I typically start at the bottom and work up. So I'm a, I'm a bottom to top kind of guy. I jiggle my cables first. There's nothing worse than you're there troubleshooting for a half an hour, and then some girl reaches down to her purse and finds a cable unplugged and plugs it in and everything gets fixed. Because you look like a giant dork. Don't be that guy. So I always check my cables first. Because plus some places are cheap. And they actually have network cables where the, um, the lock mechanism is broke, the little clip is broken off. And it's like, who would reuse this? Anyway, so you get the idea. So I jiggle my cables, and then, you know, I, I test my TCP. I ping, you know, can the user test her NIC card? You know, ping 127.001. Do I hit? Okay, so I'm good. So I got connectivity. What else? What can I connect to? Can I see my default gateway? That kind of stuff. So I start at the PC, cabling. Uh, NIC card, and then I kind of work my way out. Can I ping my default gateway? Can I ping the router? Or can I ping the internet? Can I ping Google? That kind of stuff. So I work from that way up. You know, physical, data link, network, transport, that kind of stuff. Other people start at the, the top and work down. So again, I'm a bottom up kind of guy. Um, some people are top down. Other people are divide and conquer. So as this slide tells you, some people have no idea, so they just use, oh, let me talk to the network administrator and have him do everything for me. Oh, hey, I don't know how to solve this, so I'm just going to write a ticket and send it up to the, the chain. That kind of stuff. Um, or you get the parts replacer. Sometimes this works and sometimes this is not a good idea. But basically what the guy will do is he'll come in, he'll just start swapping parts to, till he finds what the issue is. And I don't know, I mean, for me, I'd rather know what caused the issue so we don't, 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 so it doesn't happen again, rather than, oh, let me just pop in new RAM and, and you're good to go. You know, maybe it was a power surge, something like that, you never know. And then the new RAM that you put in is going to be bad another day. So then there's all kinds of flow charts, you know, determine the problem, am I using bottom up, am I using top down, and then analyze the symptoms, uh, you, get the, you get the idea. All right, network troubleshooting. So some common tools, you know, obviously there's knowledge bases out there. We want a baseline. There's all kinds of neat stuff you can use. There's protocol analyzers. There's Cisco IOS EPC. All right, so common hardware tools are network analysis modules, digital multimeters, cable testers, cable analyzers. So remember, your syslog on the router has different levels. You know, there's emergencies, alerts, criticals, warnings, notifications. Uh, for the CCNA, you will probably need to know the order that that stuff starts in. Um, I used to have an acronym for this, and now I, I totally cannot remember it. Um, so make your own acronym with E-A-C-E-W-N, um, and you're all good. So for me, again, I like to start at the bottom. You know, is it a power issue? Is it a cabling issue? Um, that kind of stuff. You know, you'd be surprised how many people call you, oh, my PC won't power on. Uh, and then the help desk guy will run down there and he'll grab the PC and say, oh, all right, let me go take this. I'm going to go replace your power supply. I'll be right back. And really what it was was uh, as the girl came in, she sat her purse on the power strip and she unplugged the power strip so that when she turned her PC on, nothing happened. So you want to check all that stuff before you go ganking the PC out. And then the data link layer, you know, um, 
Do I have a loop in my uh, switches? Um, am I getting excess of console messages? Do I have a duplex mismatch? Things like that. Then I go to my network thing. Can I ping? Can I ping my, my NIC card? Can you with testing my TCP IP stack you know, with the 127001? Can I ping my default gateway? Can I ping the server she's trying to get to? That kind of stuff. Uh, if it's a router issue, do I, I need to check the routing table? Is, is the route to this place where, you know, in my network? All right, and then you get on to the more advanced stuff. You know, is it an ACL issue at level four? Uh, is the implicit deny killing my stuff? Anytime you're troubleshooting an ACL, uh, or you think it's an ACL issue, the easiest thing to do is to take the ACL off the interface and just put either, you know, or change the ACL to, you know, permit any any. So what I'll do is, you know, I'll remove no um, access group, and then I'll make a new access list that just says permit any any, and apply that. If that fixes my problem, I know it's an ACL issue. There's something on that ACL denying my traffic. So that's the easiest way. All right. And then is it a DNS issue? Is it a DHCP issue? That kind of stuff. And then you can get into other issues at the application, uh, at the top three layers. You know, is it um, an HTTP issue? Uh, does a user have something, some kind of bug in her browser that's pushing her through a proxy? Uh, and that's why every time she tries to go to a website, she's seeing some other weird page or something like that. Is that why she can't get to our SSL service? So they have, uh, when there is no end to net connectivity, an administrator chooses to troubleshoot with a bottom up approach, which is again what I like to do, um, I check the physical connectivity, jiggle the cables, and I check the power all the way through. You know, is there a power cable into the power strip? Is the power strip lit? Is the power strip breaker off? Some, some power strips have breakers inside there. And when they get a surge, the breaker trips. So you'll still see a light on the strip, but the, the, the breaker button is checked off or it's busted, in which case you have to get a new power strip. Some of the cheap ones, uh, you know, once they get a, a thing in the, and the breaker, uh, like they have a fuse inside there, and the fuse will burn. And then once the fuse is burnt, then they can't make connectivity, so you'll see, you'll see the light on, so don't ever get those. They're terrible. Now, you want to get the one with a breaker on there where you can just kind of switch it back on and off. And then I can check the NIC card. And then I can check, the, you know, can I ping the default gateway? But you get the idea. But again, depending on, on the network and how big the issue is, you know, hey, I, I lost an entire wing. What do I do? You know, obviously, that's probably not um, a NIC card issue. Um, so, you know, wh what connects this wing to the rest of it? Um, I actually had a guy, you know, we had a building in one of my places where I worked where there were two equipment closets for one for each side of it. Like we had a, there were a large chain of buildings, but they were set into two groups. So I had a left side and I had a right side, and then they both connected to the server room. Well, he lost the left side um, building, so he lost all these users on the left, but the other building was fine and fully functioning. So his idea for troubleshooting was he went into the server room and rebooted all the switches, which took the rest of the users down. So you will not believe what you'll see in the real world. Um, I just had a student come in yesterday and was telling me that, that where he was at, there was a, a guy that was trying to troubleshoot um, an issue um, an accountant had called one of their clients and she could not get her VPN to work any longer. Um, I don't know what she did or, or something, but, but anyway, they, they made a change and now her VPN didn't work. So this, this network guy went out there for three days troubleshooting this, finally just gave up, so he called tech support for SonicWall. SonicWall dialed in and they, they found the issue within six minutes. It was an ACL that was configured incorrectly. So the, the guy fixes the issue based on Sonic's wall feedback. Everything works, and they build her for three days' worth of troubleshooting. That should be illegal, but I digress. You'll see all kinds of weird stuff. So then verify that you can get to the default gateway. Uh, verify that there's routing information in the routing table for where you're trying to go, um, and that there's no ACLs blocking it, and then you're getting correct D, uh, DNS data. Um, don't forget, you can also do, like on the PC, you can do, you know, ipconfig space um, slash renew to get a new renew IP address, but you can also do ipconfig space uh, slash flush DNS to flush the DNS settings. You know, sometimes the PC will get bad DNS information, whether it be corrupted on the, the, the path or it's no longer the same, but anyway, um, you can flush that out. All right, if it's a connectivity issue, you know, ping and trace route should show you where the issue is. Um, 
the last place I worked at, we had two routers inside our network, and then we connected through a, a T1 to a local hospital, uh, and they had multiple routers inside their network. And then it was really easy because we just had a static route that said anything for the 10 network, which was the hospital, pushed to the hospital across the T1, and we were 172. Uh, so the hospital always used the 10 network, so they had a, a default route that pointed to us. So before everything worked fine, you know, as we were testing our network, we could test IP addresses, like they gave us two IP addresses inside their network that we could test to make sure we could get in. And then we could test to see with Traceroute, can we get into their network? And we would see where the pings, where the Traceroute would fail, and it would typically fail at their border router going to the next point. So we knew we could get across our T1 into their network, but we knew their network was not set up correctly because we could not get anywhere from there. So ping and traceroute are your big friends for, for connectivity issues. Um, I typically don't start off with ping. You know, when I was uh, the early help desk guy, I always pinged everything. But ping just says, okay, it's down. Well, then the, you know the next step is traceroute. So why not just use traceroute from the very beginning? So um, I typically use traceroute. Some people use ping because then if it's successful, then you can kind of move on to something else. Um, I tend to use traceroute and wait to see that kind of stuff. All right, you can check your physical layer. Remember, show interfaces, and then you can do a specific interface. So show interfaces, fast Ethernet 00. And then remember, you know, we talked about these errors. Remember, a runt is a packet that's smaller than 64 bits. Um, a giant is a packet that's bigger than, uh, you know, 15, 18, uh, yeah, 1518 um, MTU size. Uh, there's also, what, the, what the, oh, crap, there was some other, oh, light collisions. Um, or was that it? Well, that was one where half the packet's in before you, you don't receive the rest of the packet, something weird like that. But all these different errors can kind of pop up. Hey, I'm seeing all these input errors. You know, it's possible, but not likely, that an interface on your router or device fails. You know, it does happen. You know, I've ordered, you know, $20,000 servers from IBM and had them shipped and, and plugged them in and they didn't work. They were DOA. So that stuff does happen. So check for duplex mismatch. You know, are you seeing any messages on your switch for duplex mismatch? You know, maybe the negotiation failed and the switch moved over to half duplex, but your PC is going at full duplex. And then you can check your ARP cache to make sure you have information for where you're trying to go, um, or you can ping. Um, I always ping the default gateway. Can I get to my default gateway? And then there's all these different flow charts that you can have out there. Um, you know, how do I get to here? Will I check this next? That kind of thing. I can verify the transport layer. Can I tell it into this device? You know, what is there an ACL blocking me? And then ACL issues can sometimes be the hardest ones to to track down. Although usually what happens is you got an IT guy or like a help desk guy that's trying to figure out this problem and then somewhere else in the building you have a network guy who's applying an ACL who's not telling anybody that he's working on this at the time so the the IT guy is having all these issues with his connectivity and then the network guy is over there screwing around doing stuff with ACLs and oh well, my ACL didn't work let me try this ACL oh that didn't work let me try this oh well what was the command for that let me go look that up and the whole time he's doing this, he doesn't realize that the network is down or there's some connectivity issue, and this, there's some poor little IT guy somewhere trying to fix that. So that might be where you, you call, hey, call the networking side. Hey, are you guys doing anything? In some places, depending on the organization that you work at, it may be big enough where the help desk guys, the, the typical day-to-day -day IT guys um, that just do PC repair and cabling, are in a separate location than the networking guys. And the networking guys don't like to share stuff with the help desk guys because, you know, oh, well, we're, we're big networking guys. We're not help desk. Help desk is just weak, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. So you get the idea. So you got to work together. you got to communicate this stuff. You know, anytime a network guy should be, you know, fidgeting with a firewall or a router or uh, messing with ACLs, it should be after hours. Or they should give notice, hey, um, Friday at 3 o'clock, we're going to be doing some ACL work on router 2. And that way the help desk guy, when he's out there and they have an issue, oh, well, it could be this, let me check. And then he calls the, I, and finds out that they are. But you get the idea. All right, I can verify my DNS. You know, I can do, you know, some NS lookups, that kind of thing. Or I can ping my DNS server. And then blah, 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 you get the idea. So, again, it all depends on how you like to do things. I like to do things from the bottom up. Um, only because in past experience there has been that issue where there was a loose cable and I looked like an idiot and I don't like to do that. Ray Cisco. 
All right, so really the troubleshooting thing is up to you. You kind of got to develop your own system uh, that, that works for you. The biggest thing is you always want to gather information first. Like when I was going through the ethical hacker class, um, they, they, they always stress that. You don't, you don't ever want to go into an attack or something like that with a preconceived notion. You want to gather information first um, because there may be an easy hole to fix or uh, when you're troubleshooting there may be an easy solution to this um, that you can kind of fix. Uh, one more example before I go. Um, one time we were hiring a, a new a help desk person and after we interviewed we had a PC set up on a desk and well, all we did was we unplugged the network cable um, from the back of it and then we had something on there so the network cable was kind of still on the desk so, so they only saw it from the front so they could see a network cable going to the back but they couldn't tell whether it was in or not and so now if you remember on the on the desktop on the bottom right in the corner it shows you the little red X of, so that you lost connectivity so our idea was to see how fast these guys would pick up on that and the majority of the people um, you know we tell them hey this PC doesn't have connectivity can you solve the issue and most of them w were able to solve it, you know, within two minutes. Okay, oh, oh, there's that red X. Okay, let me check. Oh, plug the cable. Okay, everything works. But we had a girl from a four-year college who had all this crazy knowledge, and she came in, and she never discovered the issue. After, like, 18 minutes, we had to tell her to stop. And she screwed that PC up so bad, we had to wipe and reload it. She's in the, the registry. She's in the boot I&I. &I, she is in every freaking nook and cranny of the operating system, funking it up <laughs> so bad. Yeah, it, you get the idea. So again, a lot of times, it's the kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, that, that's the issue. Uh, a user put a purse on a power strip. Um, a cable came unplugged. Somebody's working somewhere, um, and they didn't sell anything or say anything, but you get the idea. All right, so you guys got um, two troubleshooting labs this week. They're actually kind of cool. Uh, you guys probably won't think they're cool because basically they're, they're big networks uh, and there are multiple problems on the network. So like on one, you know, you may have a DNS issue is why this PC can't connect here. Uh, and then the other issue is like you've got a, um, an OSPF issue. So that's why this server can't connect to this device. Um, so there, each one has like four or five different things that are broken. So they'll tell you, okay, solve this issue, solve this issue, solve this issue. Uh, and then you'll have to look at it and break it down and kind of figure out and isolate the problem and fix it. <laughs> so not only do you have to identify the issue, but you have to be able to fix it too. All right, and don't forget, when you pass the CCNA and you go to the next level, the CCNP, um, there are three exams. There's the advanced routing, advanced switching, and then the third exam is just the troubleshooting exam. So they have an exam totally dedicated to troubleshooting. And if you're new to that, it can be, kind of, it can be quite difficult because like, they'll give you 13 trouble tickets with a large network. Uh, and this network has everything built into it. I'm trying to think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like eight or nine routers. And you got a GRE tunnel over here, and you got IP6 here, and you got RIP over here, and OSPF here, and BGP here. And then they'll say, okay, this user can't get out to the internet. And every ticket is pretty much the same. This user can't get out to the internet. And you got to figure out what, where the issue is, what device it is, and then what issue is it you know is it an EIGRP issue is it an ACL issue and then you have to give us what's the command that would fix this issue now you can't enter the command to test it all you can do is the show commands so you have to be able to identify the device the application that's wrong like EIGRP and then you have to give the command that would fix that issue based on the show commands so very difficult test. I saved that one for last, and actually for me that one was pretty easy. The, the advanced routing was much harder, but you get the idea. So troubleshooting, probably the most important aspect of a network tech. If you want to be a good network guy, you want to be able to troubleshoot. So I'll see you in class, and if you have any questions, make sure you bring them up.